Land Rover Toolbox Videos is sponsored by Brookwells Parts and Accessories. Check them out online at www.brookwells.co.uk. They can get everything or anything you need for any Land Rover vehicle. Okay, hello and welcome back, fellow Land Rover enthusiasts. In a recent video, you see me uh, convert a Discovery 2 rear diff into one that could be either fitted on the front or could accept a hard prop shaft with hardy spices. Well, we know the D2 one, it's uh, a little bit of a pain in the backside because you can't fit a hard prop unless you change the flange. It's just flange, it's just completely impossible. So basically we do have a kit to do it with and what you have is a round flange and the kit itself, the part number is STC485H which you can get from Brookwells and this will do the job. You get uh, seals, bolts, nuts and a split pin depending on which uh, diff you're fitting it to. But basically, yeah, I showed you how to remove this and uh, we'll accept that. Now, this Discovery has a two inch lift kit on it and it also has a hard prop, as we'll say. Uh, basically, or you can also see it's got a leaking shock absorber and uh, a blown exhaust. Now, the flange here, okay, you can see that this is a later type of uh, flange. Now, the, I've explained this in the video, which was the 4B puller tool, how to remove this, because it can be awkward. And I'm not going to uh, tell you what the tools are here, because um, the video is already up on YouTube, so the link is below. Uh, Neil's made some really good tools, and they are worth their weight in gold to do these sort of jobs. Remember, you can always buy them and then sell them again on eBay, if you need to, or hand them to a mate. And you really do need a prop shaft um, or a flange holding tool. Uh, believe me, when you work on prop shaft flanges and everything else, changing seals, you also need one of these for when you talk the nut back up again. You can do it without it, but it's awkward. Right, so what have we got on the uh, bench here? We've got an old Discovery um, diff and we've got a D2 diff. I also made a mistake because I screwed up the... Uh, um, mud shield here so i've had to take it off the other one so uh, basically that's scrap and uh, yeah okay so i'm going to show you about this flange again the part number is stc4858 and uh, this is the conversion kit now the other thing here is and um, what's important and i saw a potential problem here is if the bearing falls out and you don't know which way the shim goes in the shim goes in this way, which is uh, holding a spacer so it will give you the correct bearing preload. Now, I'll just explain it here. This one, okay, um, you have two bearings. Now, I'm easing you into transmissions here, okay? You have shims for the uh, um, pinion bearing, and on the other side, you also have the small shims here, okay? Remember that they don't go... Uh, to where the flange side is otherwise you will have problems it will lock the diff up and you'll not probably know what to do so just remember that that is vital i've seen it done and uh, it's not good anyway we'll put this out of the way now because we'll be repairing that later there's plenty of gems in the workshop manuals and this is in the discovery 2 manual and i'll read this to you it's note older front differentials have a square flange and an extra space uh, fitted this spacer must be removed later french differentials have a round flange but no spacer fitted so let's have a look at this okay so what we have here is the uh, old flange or our new kit okay this is a, a round flange and the uh, three bolt one is roughly the same Okay, so the square one is a lot shorter, the flange is a lot shorter, and it has a spacer as well. Okay, so if you were fitting this round flange, you would remove the spacer and then put it in. Okay, if, for instance, you were using one of these, as opposed to one of these, I mean, you could they're interchangeable anyway. Okay, um, basically what you'll do is do that. So if you happen to have a flange from an old diff and you wanted to convert it, you could do it that way. Just remember you need to also put a seal in there okay but we're not going to use this one it's rusty crap so anyway if you fit in the kit just throw the uh, spacer away right now it goes in like this basically 
and uh, this is what we're going to use. Now I'm going to show you how to fit this. You would have already um, removed everything. The hub seal, okay, get a genuine Land Rover one and don't remove it out of the packet until you are ready to use it because not only has it got grease in it, you just don't want any crap on it. Now this is Fiona and O'Kelly's uh, suggestion, which is right, put the diff on some uh, blocks of wood if you're knocking a seal in. Now I didn't even think of this the last time in a video, I just uh, struggled with it. But anyway, yeah, basically, so if you've got the diff out, um, put it on some blocks of wood, um, oil the bearing, and then the lip seal as well, just a little squirt of oil. Unless it's already greased, then you don't have to do it, but this is a dry seal. Okay, so uh, fit it into place and then knock the seal down. Links below to a video about seals, I suggest you watch them. And what I'll show you here is this diff seal doesn't actually go in um, very well. So this diff pinion seal has gone in on the piss. And this is the second time this has happened. Um, basically, I'm just giving the, uh, the socket that I've got here a bit more of a purchase in one, one area. And what you'll need to do is just gauge it until you've got it right. It needs to go in square, otherwise the seal will fail very, very quickly. Now, so that's right, and then the uh, flange just goes into place, okay. And then you have a washer, which you would have retained from the kit, and a bolt, which has a thread lock on it, okay. Important to have the thread lock on there. And the next thing to do, basically, is to torque this up to 100 Newton meters. Now, I'm using one of 4B uh, tools here, which is the uh, flange holder, and a torque wrench, which is set to 100 Newton meters with a 15 millimeter socket on it. Okay, so basically, yeah, click it off. And then we're done. All right. What you should check is that the uh, flange will turn fairly freely. It's four to six Newton meters of resistance. If it's locked up solid, like I say, you've probably lost the shim or put it around the wrong way. So anyway, you know we like Corollas and I'm gonna paint this with the uh, Corollas S plus a top coat of glass reinforced paint. Corollas S is a rust inhibitor stabilizer. You should know about this because we've already uh, done videos on it. If not, there'll be a link below this uh, video in the description. And I've also got the uh, rust killer spray from Corollas, which is just makes it easier for smaller components. I don't have to load up the gun. It's the same Corollas S rust inhibiting stabilizer. This is good stuff. You need two coats of this on anything and let it dry in between. Um, you can spray this when it's cold, anything over 5 degrees centigrade, and it's fine. It's about 8 degrees today. Just remember that any mating surfaces, a prop shaft or flange, are not painted. Right, well I'm actually going to try and fit this D2 diff into the uh, D1 axle. I'm just wondering if you think this is, is going to fit. We know the ratios are right, it looks exactly the same, so let's have a go, shall we?